Eastland English. Do you need help with English? We have English tutorials, sample tests, advice and tips, improve your vocabulary, grammar, skills, learn more, English knowledge, test taking strategies. Welcome to Eastland, Eastland English. English. Hello again, I'm Robert. I am Yudi. This is our advanced English grammar test tutorial number one. Directions. Choose the best answer to complete each sentence. Remember to select your answer before we give you any clues. Number one. Streamlining manufacturing processes blank this company has specialized in for over 10 years. A. Has what? B. Have been. C. Is what? D. Are that. In order to solve this sentence, we have to look at the subject first. Streamlining is the act of making something more efficient. Because it's an activity, it's uncountable and therefore needs a singular verb. For that reason, we can delete both B and D immediately. Both B and D start with plural verbs. You'll notice here that the total subject ends with a plural noun. However, this is an activity that plural noun does not affect the verb. This sentence discusses a fact about a company. We need the verb be somewhere. If option A had the addition of the verb be changed into its correct present perfect tense, it would be correct. However, it doesn't. It's missing the verb be. C is the best choice. This sentence should be Streamlining manufacturing processes is what this company has specialized in for over 10 years. Number two. Blank is something rightly feared by most people. A. Undergoing surgery. B. Underwent surgery. C. Underneath surgical. D. Under surgical. Sentence two is directly related to sentence one, but this time we're looking at filling the blank with the subject. The main verb is is. Look at the suffixes in C and D, C-A-L. This tells us they are adjectives. Because we need a noun for our subject, we can delete both C and D. A and B end with nouns, the noun surgery. Yet B begins with a verb. Underwent is the past tense for undergo. Similar to sentence one, our subject is an activity. The activity of having surgery done to you. A is the best choice. The correct sentence for this one is... Undergoing surgery is something rightly feared by most people. Number three. The expected shipment of new computers blank early next week. A. Will arrives. B. Is due to arrive. C have arrived. D. Dues to arrive. The time clue early next week can help us eliminate option C immediately. Have arrived is the present perfect tense. Even though the name of the tense says present tense, it actually signifies something that has happened in the near past. Next, we should delete choice A because will is a modal verb the verb that comes after a modal verb should be a bare infinitive. Right, so the S on the end of arrive makes this incorrect. Finally, we get to the word do. Do is an adjective. The adjective do means it's coming soon or expected to come on that date. However, because it's an adjective, you cannot change it into a verb and add an S. B is the best and only answer. If A did not have the S, it could be acceptable. 
Sentence number three should go like this. The expected shipment of new computers is due to arrive early next week. Number four. Chemical reactions in the brain blank to be biologically responsible for what people call feelings. A. Are determining factors. B. Is determined. C. Has determining. D. Have been determined. Once again, we're looking at subject verb agreement in this sentence. The main subject for this sentence is reactions. Yes, chemical is an adjective, and in the brain is a prepositional phrase. Because reactions is plural, we can eliminate the options that have singular verbs. Both B and C have singular verbs. We're left with A and D, which both have plural verbs to begin. We have to look further in the sentence. Option A ends with a noun. After the blank, we have an infinitive of purpose, which usually follows a verb or an adjective. D is the best choice. The whole sentence for number four is: Chemical reactions in the brain have been determined to be biologically responsible for what people call feelings. Number five. If Ben had paid more attention to his studies last year, he blank to repeat the class. A would have had. B will not have had. C would not have had. D cannot to have. We can tell because of the past perfect tense in this sentence that it's either a third or a mixed conditional. The meaning of the sentence addresses the consequences of Ben not paying attention to his studies last year. Before we look at the meaning of each individual answer, we can delete two of them for grammatical reasons. Can or cannot is a form of modal verb, and as Yudi said, you must have the bare infinitive of the verb following that. You don't have to after a modal verb. In B, you have a future tense and a past tense. Next, let's talk about the meaning. Once again, we're dealing with the consequences of Ben not studying hard. Even if you didn't have the picture, you can understand from the first clause that he failed. A implies that he would not have to repeat the class, even though it is a positive statement. We can infer that Ben did have to repeat the class because he didn't pay attention. Therefore, C is the best choice. The correct sentence for number five is: If Ben had paid more attention to his studies last year, he would not have had to repeat the class. Number six, the invention of water-powered cars is not an improbable idea, considering that hydrogen, a powerful fuel, blank, is a chief component of water. A, of its own. B, on itself. C, it is owned. D, in its own right. This sentence is very long and could be confusing, but the punctuation of the two commas can help us a little bit. They follow the word hydrogen. This is an appositive, and appositive is a short phrase that further defines the noun before it. A powerful fuel is a noun already. Due to this fact. We can delete C because C has the word it in it, which is a pronoun. All of the other three options are prepositional phrases. However, only one of them is correct and in usage. The reflexive pronoun itself is sometimes used to refer back to the noun in the sentence. However, the preposition would be by. A is a little bit closer if it had on its own. But in this case, it's using of its own, which isn't correct. The best answer is D, in its own right. 
This is something that we say to mean by itself or on its own. Let's hear number six. The invention of water-powered cars is not an improbable idea, considering that hydrogen, a powerful fuel in its own right, is a chief component of water. Number seven. Over the past several decades, there has been much discussion in the scientific community. Blank. Pluto is actually a planet. A. As to whatever. B. With regard. C. Regarding. D. As to whether. In order to solve number seven, we have to look at the structure of this entire sentence. There are two clauses in this sentence. If we look at both choices B and C, we can delete them because of usage. As the first incorrect option, B requires the word to to follow regard. Both with regard to and regarding mean the same thing. They are prepositions or prepositional phrases that mean the same thing as about. However, what must follow either B or C is a noun or a noun phrase, not a clause. Whatever is a pronoun, and it means anything you like. But this is specified. There's a very specific discussion going on in the scientific community about if Pluto is a planet. Whether is a subordinating conjunction that means the same thing as whether or not or if. D is the best choice. The complete and correct sentence should be. Over the past several decades, there has been much discussion in the scientific community as to whether Pluto is actually a planet. Number eight, Mr. Fenton, blank, on the bench, has dedicated his life to pondering the mysteries of the universe. A. Whom is sitting? B. The man. C. That sits. D. Man who sitting. We should delete choice D first because man is a singular noun. We need an article before it. Who is a relative pronoun, followed by a present participle, which is wrong. It needs the verb is in this case. Good explanation. With the words the and is added to choice D, it would be correct. Next, we're going to delete C for two reasons as well. First of all, that is a pronoun for a thing, not a person. Let's look at the punctuation in the sentence. Similar to sentence six, the blank is inside of two commas. These two commas form an appositive. There is a noun before it, the subject of the sentence, Mr. Fenton, and after the second comma, you have your main verb. This makes the blank. Part of an appositive, but it's a different part this time. We're looking for the noun part of the appositive. On the bench is a prepositional phrase. A, B, and C all have nouns to begin, but C has the pronoun that. That is the pronoun used in defining relative clauses, which do not come as appositives. Next, let's get rid of A. The pronoun whom is used for objects of sentences. The appositive here is for the subject of this sentence, Mr. Fenton. B is the best choice. Sentence number eight should go like this: Mr. Fenton, the man on the bench, has dedicated his life to pondering the mysteries of the universe. Number nine. Pardon me. I would like to speak to the same employee. Blank. Yesterday, A, which I speak, B, to whom I spoke, C, that I spoke, D, who I spoke. Look at the word employee here. Is a person. The pronoun which we use for things, not people. Similarly, C has that in it. Both that and which are sometimes used informally. When referring to people, however, not in English proficiency tests.
There are also other ways to delete both A and C that do not refer to the relative pronoun. The time clue yesterday tells us that the action happened in the past. In option A, speak is in the present tense. All three of the other options have the past tense of the verb. However, there's a preposition missing for both C and D. The preposition missing is to, T-O. If the preposition were here in both C and D, it would be acceptable in informal or casual speech, but not on English proficiency tests. Who is often used as an object pronoun. However, in an English proficiency test, always look for the most correct answer. To whom I spoke does sound very formal, but it's the only one that is grammatically correct. The complete sentence for number nine should go like this. Pardon me, I would like to speak to the same employee to whom I spoke yesterday. Number 10. After extensive tracing, the human variant of the virus was determined to have blank, a species of bat. A. Originated from. B. Originally in. C. Origination of. D. Originate with N. Just before the blank comes an infinitive of purpose. Was determined means the same thing as found. A virus is very small and a bat is very big. You cannot find a bat inside a virus. So there's something else necessary after the word have. It cannot be a noun or a noun phrase. B is also missing a word. We need another verb for it to make sense. If it had the verb been, it could be acceptable. Both A and D begin with a verb form. This verb originate means to come from. Both A and D are verbs. We have already determined that have is a helping verb here. Remember, a virus cannot have a bat. The bat must have the virus, and that's why have is a helping verb, not a main verb. After the helping verb have, you must have the verb three form, or the past participle form. Finally, the preposition. We use originated from, not originated within. However, within could be used, but originate as the bare infinitive cannot. A is the best choice. Let's hear our final sentence. After extensive tracing, the human variant of the virus was determined to have originated from a species of bat. Thank you for watching our video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. If you don't want to miss our new videos, click on the bell icon for notifications. That way you'll be notified every time we make and release a new video. See you next time. See you around. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.